Let's take a look at the very first post that was put on the Flint Water Study website. The very first post is basically just outlining that, uh, you know, Flint had this plan to switch to a, uh, a regional pipeline uh, with, along with several other cities uh, so that they could move away from buying Detroit water because they felt that Detroit water was becoming too expensive for them. And so the, the city council had decided that that's what they should do. And the emergency manager in the meantime thought that they could save additional money by switching to uh, the treating the Flint River water in the few short months uh, to, well, it was actually about two years before the pipeline uh, started to, was, was going to be complete. And so what we are pointing out in this first post is that uh, when they switched to the Flint River water, uh, they forgot to dose a corrosion inhibitor to the water. And that caused the corrosion of all of the metal plumbing uh, materials that came into contact with that water, including the iron pipe mains uh, that the, the utility owns that started to uh, break much more frequently than they were when they were on Detroit water. Uh, and it includes also all the sources of lead, which could be a lead service line from a water main to the house and it could also be lead that is in uh, brass devices so until 2014 uh, lead could be up to eight uh, uh, percent brass could be up to eight percent lead by weight and now it's 0.25 percent lead by weight and lead could also come from the solder and so we were just kind of highlighting the fact that that the corrosive flint river water uh, could lead to high levels of lead in the tap, just as a, a, a background um, type of information for the beginning of our website. So the Flint River water is corrosive. Did you do any analysis on what made the Flint River water so corrosive? Some people say it's salt. Some say it was the industry that had been dumping chemicals in the river for years and years and years. It could be agriculture. It's lined with sugar beet farms, the, the Flint River. Um, did you do any analysis in terms of what makes this river rot water so corrosive? So we didn't we didn't go into the causes of of what makes it corrosive, like what caused the high chloride content of the water. The only analysis that we did to determine whether the water was corrosive or not was to look at the water chemistry of the Flint River water and the water that was being distributed to Flint residents. And from there, you can look at a chemical profile of the water, and we can tell that the water would be corrosive by looking at that profile. But we didn't go into, you know, what percentage of, of it is the salt from uh, the roadways or industry or agriculture. We didn't, we didn't look into any of that specifically. When we found out about this situation, lead in the water was our number one concern. And so that's what we, you know, focused our efforts on. Uh, I'm not going to say that the cause of the high chloride, whatever it may be in the Flint River water, isn't important. It very well, well may be. But our number one concern was the health of the people in Flint and uh, we only needed to know that the water was corrosive in order to, you know, move forward with our work on how lead would get under the water. That was our focus rather than the cause of the whole.